Today I fucked up by picking up the wrong kid up for a sleepover. This was two days ago Thursday was a holiday here. My seven-year-old daughter started off at a new school this year and understandably has a bit of a hard time making new friends. This has been hard on me and her she's an extrovert and with COVID and all, she's missed out on a lot. So anyway, one of the mothers reached out to me a month ago and said does your daughter want to come over for a sleepover? We jumped on it great times were had. So then I reciprocated and said does your daughter want to come over for a sleepover? Sure. I'll pick up the kids from school and her mother was going to drop off her sleeping gear later. So I go and pick up my daughter and her friend and go on my merry way we went shopping. Got ice cream. I also for giggles. I am a dad. Had them get their nails done. Etc. 2-3 hours later I look at my phone 34 new messages. I knew something was wrong when the first message was the one that said, Um. Paige is still at school I thought the girls were having a sleepover. It went all downhill from there for the next 2 hours. But at the end of the day the parents of the girl I randomly selected for a sleepover were somewhat understanding and somehow more baffled as to why I had her nails done and the right girl did come over for a sleepover. My wife has made it clear. I'm not to pick up random girls for sleepovers. I tried to make a joke about that, but that did not go over well. Too long did not read. I mixed up my daughter's friends and took the wrong one home. Edit I want to thank everyone for the comments, awards you are a great community. I want to make one thing clear to all please do not blame seven-year-olds. I did not like the posts where my seven-year-old is called out. All parents cleared this up. The parents of the kid I mistakenly took for a fun afternoon knew very quickly this was a misunderstanding. My daughter has a sleepover planned with them. Edit my daughter does know this girl. Edit this is a small school she goes to. My wife was informed right away of what happened I just had my phone on silence. Edit. Here's a picture of them. Ah. Uh, and your daughter didn't say anything? It looks like your daughter found another friend. I have a 7 years old and absolutely can see how that happened. A friend is a friend. If the playdate was scheduled a month ago she is probably not even friends with the other kid. Edit. Spelling of friend. Bro parenting fail. So your daughter is obviously ride or die with you kidnapping little girls. Sir. Sir we are just going to have to take you off the pickup list. Thanks for the laugh. Did you call the girl the wrong name the entire time? Lol. I will say, that seems more of a fail on the school for letting it happen and truly a lawsuit waiting to happen if they don't get their shit together. I bet that friend only has great things to say about you though. Dad award. Holy shit. This is a father's nightmare scenario I never even considered. This is one of the funniest stories I've ever read on here. Today I fucked up. Update. By telling my fiancé to take the backseat so my mom could ride shotgun. Og post. So I read all your comments and I also had a serious conversation with my fiancé and siblings. I also asked some of my friends left and right. Most people from my circle I talked to tell me that it's a common courtesy for the parents to give up their seat for the fiancé, spouse and that's how most people they know do it. Maybe it's a cultural thing because many people who were from the US and commented on my previous post thought it was controversial to let my fiancé in the front seat instead of my mom. I admit I've let some situations regarding boundary crossing go on for too long. After the chat with my fiancé she once again told me the issue is not the car seat and it was never the car seat but rather the passive aggressiveness my mom always shows towards my fiancé because she knows she won't stand up for herself and that she knows she has no room to disrespect my brother or sister and she feels like she takes the passive aggressiveness out on our relationship. I decided to have a talk with my mom and it didn't end well. She made all kinds of guilt-tripping remarks and constantly compared herself to my fiancé and how I love my fiancé more than her, how she's my mother and I have no right to brush her aside. I've never seen this side of my mom before. I always thought she loved my fiancé but turns out she was always jealous and comparing herself to her even subconsciously. My siblings and their partners all have more dominant personalities than my fiancé and I combined so my mother never dated to pull this with them because she knew they're not joking around. With me and my fiancé she always counted on the fact she'd get away with it. I decided to put an end to all of it and not let my future wife be disrespected any longer and I feel very bad that I let this go on for so long. My mom claims she doesn't want to speak to me anymore and thinks my fiancé is trying to steal me away from her. I let her throw her tantrums like my siblings advised and my siblings said I did the right thing and she'll get over it. TLDR. Tried to sort out the issue between my mom and my fiancé. My mom didn't react well to it and now she won't speak to me. Jeez. 
Wait until your mom finds out that you have sex with your fiancé and not her. Do not cave. This is a very important and pivotal disagreement with your mom. She needs to know that your future wife is your priority, as she should be. This will set precedent for the rest of your lives. Oh boy. I am sorry your mom decided to pull rank. Family should never put you in the position to force you to choose between people. She sounds immature and quite spoilt and toxic in her behavior. Maybe taking a break from talking to her is not so bad. I'm in my 30s now, and of the majority of people I know that have had divorces have cited overbearing parents as a significant factor. Set the boundary strong now save it will make years of your marriage easier. Ooh my fiancé did this to me a few years back when we first started dating. I got in the front seat, and he asked me to get out and sit in the back with his dad who I'd only met once before. Because his mom liked the front seat because driving makes her nervous. Firstly it's safer in the back. Secondly. Thirdly and many many more points thereafter showed a toxic mother-in-law who went on the call me names, accused me of doing nasty things, and spreading rumors about me to name just a few things. My long-winded point is, good on you for dealing with this toxic behavior early on. You have a very lucky fiancé. Your significant other comes first. I watched as my brother went through two marriages because he put our mother first, and mom did things like what you describe in your story. She tried similar behavior with my wife, which resulted in estrangement from my family. Both me and my wife refused to be part of that fucked up dynamic. You can choose who you spend the rest of your life with, but you don't get to choose your family. As a wife you'd never have to ask me to sit in the back I would automatically offer it to elders or anyone that needs more space to be comfortable. However, this seems to be an issue with your mom competing with your wife for your love and not seating arrangements. Hope you work it out with everyone. Smile. Constantly compared herself to my fiancé and how I love my fiancé more than her. Ah, uh, yeah, that's how it's meant to work. Today I fucked up by stealing valor on Veterans Day. This happened last night and I think I'm the biggest scumbag in the USA. So today was my first time ever going to a bingo hall. I didn't particularly want to go but it was to accompany my girlfriend as a plus one to her after work social event. We arrived at the event and it's completely packed. I'm estimating 500 plus people, huge bingo hall in Texas. I meet her work colleagues, things are going pretty well. The bingo hostess finally goes on stage to kick off the night, and everyone is hyped. She begins talking but the sound was pretty muffled, and our group starts making jokes about how you'd think they'd have a better mic. I suddenly tune back to listen to the hostess because there's a long pause in the room. Everyone is dead silent, looking around at each other, but not saying a word. The hostess then says, is anyone celebrating? Anyone? Here's where the single worst decision I've ever made in my life comes in. See, I recently went to a hibachi restaurant where they ask if anyone was celebrating a birthday, and we'd pretend that it was our birthday so they'd sing a song. So, for literally no reason, I stood up and shouted, me. Since no one else was saying anything and I thought she'd wish me a happy birthday. But instead, the entire building immediately starts clapping. And I just don't mean a decent applause from a crowd, I'm talking over 500 people seriously clapping their hands together. I was so thrown off guard, yet impressed by the massive ovation, that I began bowing to the crowd around me. I don't know why, it just seemed like the right thing to do. After 10-15 seconds of the entire hall doing nothing but applauding me, I sit back down and look at the group, expecting laughter and questioning about if it was really my birthday. But instead my girlfriend and work colleagues look confused, and no one's really saying anything. Until one of the co-workers go, wait, what was that for? I don't know, haha, I think it was for birthdays. And before she could say another word, that, oh no, I just foo, feeling rushed through my entire body as it clicked in my head what just happened. Um, I think that was for veterans. Realizing that I lied to hundreds of people and had them falsely honor me, the group gave me a, I can't believe you just did that, kind of look, and everyone was pretty uncomfortable. To make matters worse, the hostess would make war veteran references throughout the night, such as saying how the shape we needed to make on our bingo board was a war jet, etc. Also, I had anxiety the entire night knowing that if I were to win bingo, everyone would clap, and I'd have to approach the hostess that I lied to to check my numbers, which would give her the opportunity to dig deeper into my veteran story or even worse thank me again for my service. The girlfriend and I haven't talked about it yet but I don't think I'm invited back to her work events. Also I don't think I'll ever get this jabroni move off my conscience. Too long did not read.
tried to play a joke and received a standing ovation from a crowd of 500 plus people for being a service members on Veterans Day when I am not in the military. Sounds like just an unfortunate accident. What I find puzzling is that out of 500 Texans, you were the only veteran, or only one willing to be acknowledged. Are you sure they weren't asking something like, are there any Medal of Honor recipients in the crowd? Ha 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 ha. Hello. U.S. Army veteran and fellow Texas resident here. It was an honest mistake and makes for a great story. If the announcer said, who is celebrating Veterans' Day? Who is to say you was not? Either way because you had the stones to bow, completely epic by the way. I would say you are forgiven rolling on the floor laughing. Made my morning better though. Stolen valor is specifically about claiming you were awarded honors or medals. You're just an idiot grin. Imagine going to a gathering of 500 plus people and there isn't a single actual veteran. My husband, as a very young man, was, other than honorably, discharged from the military. His niece posts a Facebook Veterans Day tribute every year. It makes me so uncomfortable. He is never on there. It makes me so uncomfortable that I don't tell him. Whhhhhyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Probably not the first time she's felt this way. Everyone saying she sucks and don't marry her is only going off the small narrative you completely controlled and gave us here. Do some serious reflection on yourself before you give up on her. As a non-native English speaker is very funny and disturbing that your mom takes shotgun against your fiancé XD. Honestly. Yeah your significant other got a point. If this was a new relationship then fine, but you're about to get married to her and your mom doesn't fuck with her lol. Honestly if the mom always sat in front I'd get it. But it does seem like the mom had something to state by sitting in the front seat. I honestly believe people don't erupt like this for no reason and we're not hearing both sides of the story. Op you might be right but there might also be things you have not noticed but your fiancé has. I would suggest talling with your fiancé, not your mother because that would be unreasonable. Except if your fiancé brings up other times where she has felt discriminated against and or disrespected. Solution. Your significant other drives and your mom rides shotgun. You sit in the back. Rolling on the floor laughing. I'm gonna take out all the emotions of this scenario. I thinks it's weird letting your mother who is just getting dropped off somewhere take the front seat. Your fiancé would then have to get out and move to the front or stay in the back to have you chauffeur her around. It would make more sense for your mom to sit in the back so your fiancé doesn't have to do all the shuffling around after your mother gets out of the car. That's on you. Wouldn't take much to mention to your mom you want significant other next to you. Could save so much frustration and hurt if you start boundaries now. This hit home for me. My advice is to address this ASAP. I had a different but altogether similar dynamic of passive wife and mother who took slight advantage. Best case is to start setting the boundaries right away. Make your wife clearly the priority while still making it clear to mom that you love and respect her. Unfortunately in my case my mother passed away while there was tension that in my opinion was largely caused by my own inability to deal with the little things before they became big things. 